I mentioned to you guys before, this was very last minute. She said yes. I was like, okay, you can be on Campfire Radio. I love you. <laughs> but 702 were, were one of the hottest groups in the, in the late 90s and, you know, early 2000s. And her voice as the lead vocalist of the group just was transcendent. And I'm so honored to welcome her here, here on Campfire Radio. Camila Williams was one-third of the R&B group 702. With her powerful lead vocal, Camila helped the group reach the top of the charts, earn an American Music Award nomination, and a Soul Train Award. Now she is back simply as just Mila. Everyone, please welcome Mila to Kempire Radio. Mila! Hey! Hello! Well, please <laughs> welcome you. Oh, my Lord. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank please. So well, first off, I have to let you know, um, Coco sends her love. I love, honey, I send it right back. I love me some Coco. <laughs> and she came on the show, and she was so gracious, and she sang for us, and all, and Aww. I'm so happy you're here. I'm really, really happy you're here, because you really are one of my favorite voices from that from that era, still. I mean, I, I oh wish my. you were singing music for us. Thank but we're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about music, but... Okay. All right. Let's just let's just okay. let's go back. Yeah, let's just it. go back a little bit. You just let's go back. you seven oh two was discovered by Sinbad, correct? Um, yeah, actually I wasn't a part of the group then. Mm-hmm. Um, but to my knowledge from what the girls told me, they met Sinbad, uh, I think at one of the hotels in Vegas mm-hmm. where we're from. And um I believe they were singing. If they weren't singing for him, I think they told him, you know, that they sang and he suggested that they go to a music festival out here in Atlanta, Georgia. I think mm-hmm. it was uh, the Jack the Rapper music festival. Um, and they went. They took his advice, and they went, and that's where they met Michael Bivens. Mm. Michael Bivens um, wanted to replace four members then. Michael Bivens wanted to replace... Hello? Mila? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you? Let me turn the music off. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little backdrop music. <laughs> wow, okay. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. can you hear me I'll now? turn it off. I'll turn it off so you can. Right. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah, so what part did you, in, let's see, what did you hear? The last part that they went to Atlanta and they, did, and you said right. they, they, went to they Atlanta won that. And they, yes, they entered the Jack the Rapper contest, our music, you know, uh, festival, what have you, and that's where they met Michael Bivens. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they met Michael Bivens, um, he signed them. He did sign them. However, it was four girls in the group then, and he wanted to replace two of the girls. And then mm. that's where I came into the picture. He replaced um, me with two of the girls, so it went from a, a four girl group to a three girl group. And they were all they were all sisters, right? Sisters um, and cousins. At the time, the three yep, the three of them were sisters, and then a cousin. Yeah, I replaced one of the sisters and a cousin. And he, um, you know, he liked it as three, and then, you know, somehow I became the lead singer. <laughs> well, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that, Mila. So, we recorded an album, and yeah. <laughs> but, but, but Mila, um, I it. Uh, but let, let's just just backtrack just a little bit. Did you know no the problem. girls before you, before you got into the group? I did. We actually went to school together. We went to a performing arts high school in Las Vegas. Okay. And, uh, yep. So Lamisha and I. Um, actually were in a class together. I think we had, like, history or something together. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, and then the crazy thing is, uh, the irony of that is we actually went to uh, the sixth grade together, also me and Lamisha, and it's so weird because we didn't even know each other then. Like, you know, we weren't even, like, friends then. And then we ended up going to the same high school, and who knew we were going to be in the same group together? <laughs> I know. I know. You just you just never know what is going to happen in life, right? You don't. You don't. You really don't. It was just like wow. So yeah. Where, so where do you call home now? Because so have... we know you know seven hundred two is the area code of Las Vegas, where you guys are from. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So where do you call home now? Well, I lived. Um, I just moved from L.A. My mm-hmm. parents, my family, everybody, my whole crew is still back in Vegas. But cool. I was living in I lived in L A for like ten years. Like when seven hundred two was really rocking, like I made L A my home. Mm. And um, I just moved from L A last year to Atlanta, so I'm in I'm in the dirty south now. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> well, you know, Atlanta seems to seems to be the place to be if you want to. I you know, know. Make, everybody's but, out here. My goodness. I think I might have to move, but I love New York City. <laughs> I feel you. I know that's right. I like the East Coast too. <laughs> so you know, you know, we talked about seven hundred two a little bit, but what happened? Because there was a point where you, you know, you guys had all of the success. You know, you had mm-hmm. you know these top ten singles. You, you're doing well. Everyone knows who you are. And after that second album, you parted ways with the ladies, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you went. Well, on the your... misconception of that is that I just left, you know, to go pursue a solo career. Like, I'm, yeah. the, I'm the lead singer, I'm out, I don't need y'all. And that <laughs> fucks me so much because that's not the case at all. Oh. I mm-hmm. never had a lead singer attitude like, yo, I'm out, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm dropping y'all. Never yeah. that. We actually ended up having, you know, what most girls have, um, just drama. You know, there was a lot of animosity, a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of miscommunication. Um it got to the point to where we just we weren't getting along. We we um we just couldn't really agree on a lot of different things. Business mm. was it like business? One of them. I'm sorry. Was it like business kind of things? Like you know, yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I was just saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It 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 um it started with business. We couldn't agree on management because we had a few different managers, and you know that was one of our issues. And then mm. and that's really once important. We started, it is. The management is very crucial, you know, and, and plays a, a key part, you know, in having a career. We just couldn't, we couldn't come to an agreement on things of that nature. And so eventually it took its toll because it got to the point to where it was about to get physical. Oh. And I was like, oh, no, I don't, I'm, this is not what I do. I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> Honey, I was like, nah. I'm not, yeah, I'm like not you're about really dropping a lot of information because uh, I mean the 702. Um, we ne- I don't think I viewed it as a breakup because no one really said anything about it. it well, yeah, kinda... because we we never discussed it, we never talked about it, we always kept it on the hush, and then we reconciled, and when, and then we did a third album, and we never really spoke about it. You know what I'm saying? And it just got to the point where you know I guess some things are better left unsaid, so we just let it go, we swept it under the rug. But I'm here today to tell you now that it was about to get physical. Um, and before I allowed it to get to that point, I walked away. That's the real reason why I walked away, mm-hmm. because, you know, people were, you know, they were trying to just take it to another level. And it just got very ugly and disrespectful, and I didn't think that was necessary. You know what I mean? Like, did you child, feel kind of left- this, this one is, I'm not about to be fighting. Like, <laughs> did you feel I mean, if it got to go down, it'll go down. But it's silly. You know what I mean? That's like, I, that's just not my character. And I, I just chose to walk away, you know. Did you feel kind of left out because you weren't family and, you know, pretty much everyone there was related? Yes, even the manager was family. Um, <laughs> I didn't feel left out because, I'll be honest, we, we had good we had good times. Like, don't get me wrong, we wasn't the type of group that was, like, constantly bickering and beefing and arguing. Like, we had mm-hmm. more good times than bad. However, when we did have those bad times, man, it was just super tense and uncomfortable and just not, not cool, you know. Who wants to work under those conditions? You know what I'm saying? And I don't like tension. I hate tension. I don't like being phony and fake. Like, I can't do that. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, put it aside and let's just get this paper. But in all actuality, I'm not trying to – I want to be cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? And if we can't be cool and we can't be cordial and, like, that junk be genuine and from the heart, then I don't want to be a part of it. I really don't. And so I will leave and I will walk away. So you left and you joined forces with Faith Evans and her husband, Right. Mhm. I and, did. And yeah, I, I left, and I was under their management for a short time. Yeah. And, we, and I remember cool. seeing you background vocals, and you also wrote on uh, Faith Evans' uh, Faithfully album, right? Correct. Yeah. So that was cool. You know, I got a chance to write, and you know, of course, she's one of the illest vocalists in the game, and it was just, you know, such an honor and privilege to be in the company of such great talent.